It's visa run day. We left super early and we drove through the night. Six and a half hours of driving. It was quite tiring, but doable. Eden is with us, which we're very happy about. And now we are all the way down in Renong, ready to do our border crossing. So we're going to have a little bit of food and then head off to the border. Passports are at the ready. Eden, you're gonna stay here with the air conditioning on, okay? Hey, your road trip's over, you can take off your RTB now. Eden is still rocking her original RTB because the ones that we were having delivered in the post came just a bit too late and we missed the postman yesterday. So a little bit annoying. It would have been nice to put Eden in her new bandana for this trip, but there'll be other road trips, Never mind. I'm quite glad that we brought our own breakfast with us because it looks like they don't have any food here at all, does no. it, in the hotel? It's very basic. It's quite difficult to find because there's no sign for it yeah. on the road. So. There's no English or Thai sign, I don't, there's nothing at all. We've never stayed in this hotel before. It's called Nartavi Resort. It's very basic. There's no view from the window at all, but it was quite cheap. It was about 600 baht per night. The resort that we stay in normally is no longer on Agoda or Booking.com. So I don't know if they've stopped their services on there or if they're not no longer pet friendly. I don't know what it is, but that is why we're in this place. Obviously it's pet friendly and even a dog is permitted to stay. It doesn't appear that any of the staff that we've met so far speak any English, but we've managed to check in, no problem anyway. And this is what the room looks like. So it's a 20 square meter concrete room with a huge S on the wall for Sasha, I think. What else could it be? And you can see the windows are frosted over, probably because there's nothing to see out there. Basic TV that we never watch, little corridor. And the bathroom is in here. There was one or two mosquitoes when we first opened the door, but it's not too bad. They don't give you much in the way of soap. It's kind of a very watered down, cheap body wash, but it's okay. We brought a load of stuff of our own. Okay, we're gonna eat our breakfast now. We've decided to stay a little bit of time in the room so Eden can get used to being in here. We don't like to leave straight away. And then we're gonna head off and get this visa run done because it's playing on our minds and we're a bit worried about it. A visa run is something that pretty much every expat under retirement age has to do. When we first had to do one, it was very exciting for us because the idea of going over to Burma, the country where my mum was from, was a completely new experience for us. Having lived in Thailand for almost four years now, what used to be exciting is now a hassle for us because every time we have to cross over the border, whether it's every 60 days or every 90 days, and we're never quite sure if we're gonna be allowed back in the country, it's stressful and it doesn't feel the same way as it used to. There was a time when we would look at the wooden huts by the water and we'd look at the way of life on the other side of the border and be really moved by the things that we were seeing. But now a visa run is like a formality to us. But all said and done, when we went over and came back, it turned out to be quite a painless experience in the end. And now we're back in the car and we need to fuel ourselves with food. So we've driven into town and we've come to Renong Hideaway restaurant, which we like. So we'll take you in there. Yes, we have. We've both made our orders. Sasha got a mango shake. I got the tonic water, which I really like now. We're the only people in here today. Completely empty restaurant today, just me and Sash. If anybody's curious as to why Sasha changed her clothes before we did our visa run, it's because we like to be respectful when we go over there <laughs> to cause as little problems as possible. Yes, it's true. I've always put on my trousers and a, a covered t-shirt to do a visa run, especially down here, crossing over into Kortong, into a different country and just 
I feel better being more covered up than going over there in a vest and shorts. Also, you're climbing in and out of boats and jumping up walls and stuff sometimes, so it does, it's just better to be a bit more covered up. A few years ago now, we spent a couple of days in Kotong when we done a Burma boating trip. While we were there, we did notice that a lot of the Westerners that were coming over to do their visa run, they were getting looked at quite a lot by the guys that were hanging around the boats. They were getting blown kisses at and catcalled, and quite a lot of them were dressed inappropriately in shorts and you know string vests, a bit of cleavage. So that's why I prefer to cover up because. I just want to draw as little amount of attention to myself as possible when doing things like this. And while we were there watching this happening to other Western girls, I felt a little bit uncomfortable with it. <laughs> it wasn't until we were in a cafe and they had the TV on and there was a Burmese film on, which didn't even show a couple of kiss. There was no touching, it was very, very reserved, and there was no skin on show or anything like that. And then that film finished, and then a Cameron Diaz film came on. There was Cameron Diaz running around in her bikini at a phone party, and there was quite a lot of flesh on show. So to see that comparison straight away from watching a Burmese film on, on the TV, going straight over to an American Cameron Diaz film, it kind of made sense why they maybe think it's okay to call out to Western girls and things like that because they see it on TV, whereas their television and culture is very much covered up and reserved and nothing like that is shown, not even hand-holding. Yeah, it was quite an interesting observation and when I speak to my mum about the Burmese films that she watches because my mum is Burmese, she said that it's always been like that as far back as she can remember back when she was in Burma. The people are much more reserved in their culture so to um, expose yourself to the Hollywood's idea of a free world maybe making a little bit of an influence on some of the behaviour of some of the people out there but yeah it was an interesting observation. And then this happened. I got a chicken steak and I got a roll. And Sasha has gone Thai food today and got a yellow curry with potatoes and chicken. It's a big portion, isn't it? Hmm, looks nice. <laughs> and lunch is done. Everything came to 355 baht. Very good, very tasty. We are heading back to the hotel now to get some rest. Hello, we're back. Come on, let's go for a walkie. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice spin. We have also come back to a fully made bed, which means Miss Eden did not dig the bed up at all. Good girl. Was you a good girl? Yeah. We are gonna take a couple of hours and just have some rest because neither of us got any sleep last night. Both of us feel so relieved that we got the next stamp in our passport so we are good for another 60 days. We didn't have any problems thankfully and we can now enjoy the next couple of months worry free <laughs> and enjoy the time that we have left in Thailand. Our hotel is directly opposite the Bald Mountain. We've been up here before and it's about half past five now. There's some nice light and we decided to come out and give Eden a nice walk. It's quite breezy so it's nice. It's not very hot at the moment. One thing we've always liked about living in Thailand is the consistency of the weather. We know that if we go out at 4.30 there's going to be some nice lighting and we can take the camera out and get some really nice shots without having to check the weather and stuff like that. I think it's something that we might take for granted because when we used to live in the UK it would have to be a planned event on a summer's day to get these kind of conditions and it was never consistent. One thing that we like about this area in Renong is it kind of reminds us of the UK a bit with the grassy hill and the wide open patches of field without too much jungly environment around. It's different 
a very different area in Thailand, a bit of an environmental anomaly, which is why it became a tourist attraction. But for us, it's just a great place to walk Eden, and for her to get some new smells, a great place for dog walking. Now that our time in Thailand is coming to an end, I'm trying to take in as many of these moments as possible and really remember where we are. This is one of those moments and I think I'll always remember this area as being one of my favourites. And I think maybe Eden feels the same way too. At this time of year, the bald mountain slash grassy hill looks a bit brown and dead. A bit like a mini version of the chocolate hills in the Philippines. <laughs> that white line you can see there in the rocks, that is the Niao waterfall, which you can actually walk to from our hotel. But at this time of year, it looks like there's no water at all. So not much point going to see that waterfall. Apparently Thailand is facing its worst drought in about 20 years, was it? I think so, yeah. It has been very dry lately. And that was a really nice little walk. I'm pleased we came out here. I enjoyed that, very, very pleasant. And little Miss Eden enjoyed that as well. <laughs> Good like half an hour walk, I'd say good for her. We're just going to give Eden one last bit of off-lead freedom before we head back. Eden, come! We are heading back to the hotel now and then going to go out and get some dinner. We are back in the room after our little walk. We've just given Eden her dinner and Jay and I are going to go out. We found a little Italian restaurant when we were here last time. It was actually quite nice. So we're going to go and see if that restaurant's open and head there for our dinner. Unfortunately, the restaurant we were aiming to go to is closed. So we are got our thinking hats on of where to go now. Right, we've chosen to go to a restaurant called Dee Dee's Restaurant. We've been here before. I feel absolutely knackered though. We did sleep for about an hour and a half earlier, but it's not even seven o'clock yet, and I just feel like I could curl up and go to sleep right now. My arms are heavy. Yeah, we've got the heavy limbs. <laughs> We've both ordered dishes that we're not sure about. Sasha went for a pad thai inside an egg roll, and I went for crispy noodles in gravy. So if they're not good, we've both decided that we're just gonna order some pancakes instead. <laughs> Two drinks that have recently popped up onto my radar that I now like are tonic water and root beer. These are my drinks of choice if I see them on a the menu. I don't fancy just water. Such as staying healthy and just drinking vitamin water today. <laughs> and so this is the pad thai in the egg roll. It's basically pad thai but inside like an omelette wrap, isn't it? Actually looks quite nice. Good choice. And this is what my dish looks like. Interesting. I've never seen that before. Enjoy. All right, we are suitably satisfied. Got the two dishes and we also got two pancakes for dessert and a drink, only one drink. And the whole thing came to 290 baht in total. I'll tell you what I've got, information. What's your information? I did not dig the bed. I did not. Oh. Good girl. So I think we've worked it out, putting on the TV and putting some Thai soaps on and uh, Eden doesn't dig the bed. <laughs> I think we have to try this in uh, multiple hotels now, Sash. See if Eden likes watching Thai soaps. Well, what's happening? What's this, story? What's happening? This lady is having a bit of a drama oh my God. with this other lady. Is this her son? No. Oh. <laughs> no, that's another girl. <laughs> Mum, that's another girly. You don't know anything about Thai soaps. <laughs> 
No, she's not happy. Okay, what else? What else is happening? Um, uh, sun the sun is rising. That's a bad hit. <laughs> And so I think that concludes the day. We started today not knowing if we'd be allowed back in the country and now we are back and pleased that everything's sorted Yay! and Eden's eating her fish and everything's working out just right. So tomorrow we are heading off on a little holiday. Yay! We are <laughs> we're gonna go to Kopanyang. So join us on that journey. We've never been to this island before. We have it's not. well known for its full moon party, which we will not be going to. I might as well just tell you that now. It's not a full moon anyway, so it's yeah. gonna go on. No, but they do a half moon party too, so um, meant to be more to this island than just the full moon parties and we want to discover that. So come with us and see what we find along the way yeah. with Eden the dog. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit the thumbs up button if you found any of the information useful and subscribe to our channel and check us out on Instagram because we're always putting pictures up um, of the latest stuff that we're getting up to. <laughs> and, and Twitter. And Twitter. <laughs> and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. I'm still not entirely sure what's going on, but these two were just knocking on people's doors, <laughs> trying to ask questions, but they were always behind a fence. And the person behind the fence wasn't really talking, and they kept kind of doing whys. Was it their neighbour? No, they were randomly driving down the street and they were pulling up next to people's fences and there was always somebody next to the fence. It's like, why is there always somebody by the fence? It's just most, confused too. Yeah, most people would be inside the house, but they were, they were still, I think they were all gardening. <laughs>